Hello and welcome to the new lesson on Azure Technical Skills. In this lesson, we will learn how do we promote a Windows Server machine to a domain controller. Now, the reason why it is important to understand is that uh, in our previous lesson, we did a lab on AD Connect, for which I had set up a domain controller already. So, when you are doing your own practice lab on AD Connect, you must know how will you set up the environment first. Now, we all know that a domain controller is a server that responds to a security authentication request within a Windows Server domain. It is responsible for registering host computers so that they can access the organizational digital resources as well. Since I do not have access to a physical machine, I have set up a virtual, mach uh, a virtual machine uh, which hosts Windows Server 2012. The higher uh, the better, but for the sake of demonstration that will do. So without further ado, let's see how it is done. So here we are logged into our Windows Server 2012 machine. Now before we begin, uh, the first thing that you might want to do is uh, make sure that you have static IP configuration for your, uh, for your private IP address. Because if you are getting an IP address from DHCP, uh, your host machines will have problem accessing the resources. Okay, So make sure you have static IP address configured. Now once that is done, you might, might want to go to the server manager. You can see this icon over here. I'll click on it and then you will click on add roles and features okay so this pop-up you can simply click next and in here you you you'll make sure that the first option is selected the set so the second option is for Windows virtual desktop uh, environment uh, we want to select this one the first one and click next and in here I can see the name of my the name of my computer which is domain controller I'm sorry for the typo here and then the private IP address which has been statically assigned is 10.0.1.6 and in here I can see my operating system so I will click next and then in here you want to select Active Directory domain services since we are adding a new uh, Active Directory instance we will select this option you can click here and then it will tell you that uh, Active Directory domain services require further features. So these will be the additional features that will be installed. Installed. So we'll click on Add Features, and then simply click Next. Now in here it will automatically uh, uh, pick up the required features, which is the .NET framework, group policy management, enhanced storage, etc. Okay, so we are comfortable with that. So simply click Next. And then click next and simply click install now this will take a while maybe two or three minutes so once this is done uh, make sure uh, you might want to notice that once this is done uh, it doesn't mean that the Active Directory has been configured on your server it just means that the required roles and features have been installed on this server okay so we'll have to do some additional steps uh, to in order to fully configure our active active directory okay so the process is done the next thing we want to do is to click this flag icon here oh okay wait wait it's not done it's still in progress okay so i'll get back to you once the process is completed okay so once the required roles and features have been added you can go ahead and click on this notifications icon which is a flag icon basically and then in here you will be able to see this link which says promote this server to a domain controller so we'll click on it and then I'll have a new dialog box which uh, uh, in which I'm presented with several options now the first option is add a domain controller to an existing domain now if in my network I have other servers as a domain controller and I want to add this machine this current machine that I'm currently logged in on I want to add this machine to that domain controller so in that case I will select the first option but since I'm adding a new uh, Active Directory tenant I will click the third option which is add a new forest and then in here I had to provide the root domain name the root domain name is actually the fully qualified domain name for my network now the agenda for this uh, setup was to uh, 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 in the end uh, configure it for Azure AD Connect for that we have to uh, provide the domain name which is the same as verified in our Azure portal 
as you can see in my Azure portal, my primary domain name is uh, gssdmv2 on Microsoft.com. So I will copy this, and then I will paste it over here in this text field. So once that is done, you can click next. Okay, on this uh, dialog box, uh, imagine you have uh, several other servers for which you want uh, compatibility for some other Windows Server operating system installed, some other version. So you'll have to select the appropriate option accordingly. Once that is done, uh, you'll have to provide some uh, password for uh, in case something goes wrong. So you'll have to recover the directory services. So for that, you have to provide some password. Now, the best practice is to provide the same admin password for the user that you have currently logged in. The admin password, I mean. So I will type in the admin password. And then type it again once more. And once the password matches, you can click next. And then it gives us a warning which we at this point can simply ignore and click next. Now this will set us uh, up uh, uh, with a NetBIOS domain name which is basically our domain name with that dot on microsoft.com okay so we are you we can basically name it anything but uh, by default it is uh, in this format so I'll leave it as it is and simply click next Okay, and in this, in these options, I can uh, set up the path for database folders, log files, or sys volume, etc. So, in case I have shared map drives, in this, in that case, I can uh, change the path for. But for the same, uh, for the same server, for a, for a single machine, these paths are okay. Most of the time, you'll not, be, you'll not be required to change these settings. So, you can just simply click next, and then click next. Now this takes a while, maybe one or two or three minutes again. So uh, in here I can see all the warnings. Warnings are fine because in the end uh, you can see that all prerequisite checks pass successfully. Click install to begin the installation. But if something goes wrong, you will have a red pop up here, which is not okay. So you'll have to do this process over again. But for me, everything has succeeded. So I can simply click install. Now this takes a while as well, so I'll pause the video for now and once the process complete, com is completed, I'll get back to you. Okay, so once the process has been completed, you'll be, ab you'll be able to notice that if you're on a virtual machine, you will lose the session. Or if you're on a physical machine, uh, the physical machine will restart by itself. You will be signed out of your current user in both the cases. But do not panic, it's a good sign. It just means that it's all going according to the plan and Active Directory services are being started. So that's why it will ask you for a reboot. So since I was on a virtual machine, let me take the session back. I will go to my remote desktop, paste the IP address over here and then click connect. Now since I had already saved my login credentials in here, so that's why it did not ask me for the password again. Now once we are logged into our server, our domain controller, I'll show you how we can verify that the services, required services Active Directory has been installed or not. Okay, so here we are at our virtual machine or our domain controller. So I'll click on server manager. And then if you want to verify it, you can simply click on tools. And then under this section, you should be able to see all the Active Directory related uh, options. So let's say if I click on Active Directory users and computers, it will uh, present uh, me another pop-up in which I should be able to see my domain, all of my organizational units. I can see my users, my domain controllers, my computers. So yes, that's it for domain controller. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.